actually impact the necessity to do more trade more quickly with other parts of the world? Well, actually, you know, the, the, the COVID has had quite a lot of impact in Africa. You know, growth had come down by you know, minus 2.1 percent last year. You know, but although we now say that it's going to go back to about 3.4 percent, you know, for this year. Uh, the foreign direct investment, unfortunately, had been actually badly affected. Our foreign direct investment went down from $45 billion in 2019 to, uh, you know, roughly $27 billion by last year. So the opportunities uh, are immense as the world goes back in terms of opening up the lockdowns and making sure that trade and investment can continue, mergers and acquisitions can continue. The fact is Africa still retains the same fundamentals that allow it to have five or six of the ten fastest growing economies in the world pre-COVID. So those things are still there in terms of macroeconomic stability, the size of the economies. Uh, the, you go 1.3 billion uh, uh, size of people, uh, and one out of five uh, people by 2050 will be, in terms of demand, will be in Africa. So those things are actually still there. We still have now the Africa continental free trade area, which opens up an Africa GDP collective of $3.3 trillion. So you cannot ignore Africa. So basically the opportunities for trade, for investment, are there. Uh, the fundamentals are still there. You know, it's like you 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 went off a highway uh, on a detour. We're going to get back right on it and uh, continue to do uh, what we've been doing. I think Africa presents yeah. itself as a market that uh, cannot be ignored. Um, Emma, um, Wade Smith, when you look at some of the countries that are actually first in line to have some kind of trade agreement with the UK, who are you targeting first? Well, we've spent the last few years working really hard across the continent to ensure that we've got continuity of trading arrangements. Uh, and we did a tremendous job, in my view, uh, to, to achieve so much of that agenda by the 1st of January, uh, when we uh, officially uh, were no longer a member of the European Union and the Customs Union. Um, and so you know, we're working uh, really hard to make sure that now we have those bilateral arrangements, uh, we are utilising those and we are implementing them effectively with a view really to engaging across the continent with like-minded governments to see how do we build from here. You know, the UK is absolutely uh, an open free trade champion around the world uh, and we want to see that manifest itself even more across the African continent. And we heard there from Dr Adesina about the continental free trade area and how vital that is going to be to unlock some of that inter-African trade. Uh, and we also want to be encouraging more African businesses to be trading with the rest of the world. And, of course, from my perspective, more with the UK. Uh, Dr. Adesina, Dr. Wade, good morning. Tom Keane in New York. Dr. Adesina, you hold the Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Holy Grail of Agricultural Economics, which is a Ph.D. from Purdue University. I believe it's in the state of Indiana. Dr. Adesina, I want to talk to you in link trade in the efforts you're doing with the simple need for a comprehensive water plan across Africa, link together the age-old problem of water management with jump-starting trade in Africa? Well, basically, you know, the thing is, Africa is, you know, when it comes to the issue of water, agriculture is often very, very important. The size of the food and agricultural market in Africa uh, will be roughly one trillion dollars, you know, by 2030. So that is agriculture is the key, you know, and you have a rapidly growing population. And uh, Africa has 65 percent of all the arable land left to fill the world by 2050. So what Africa does with agriculture, how it does it, is really going to determine the future of food in the world. Now, it's it's not just water, but you also got to look at technology. You got to look at uh, the, the the value chains for transformation. So Africa is not exporting raw materials all the time. Today, you got Africa, you know, with um, you know 75 percent of the global supply of cocoa beans, you know, but we only get only two percent, you know, of about 120 billion dollars of the chocolate market every year, and that's not the way to do trade. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to work a lot on that. But water, in terms of what you said, is climate change. You know, Africa is badly affected by climate change. You see a lot of challenges with drought in many places. So the key really is to make sure that we can grow African agricultural systems in a more climate resilient manner. So the issue of water, the issue of water management becomes very, very important. And the issue of water efficiency, for, uh, various technologies to allow that. We have a technology, by the way, um, that is called water efficient maize for Africa. And that allows farmers to grow maize in drought tolerant and um, in, in drought environments. We also have something called Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation that has provided for Sudan and Ethiopia 
heat tolerant wheat varieties. Uh, you know very well that like uh, 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 wheat is growing in, 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 in temperate environments. But now we have wheat varieties that grow in very hot environments. And now we provided that to Sudan mm -hmm. uh, in 2019. And I tell you, it, it's allowed them to be able to almost reach half of their self-sufficiency uh, uh, right. in uh, the wheat production. So the, the, the point is, you need R&D, you need infrastructure, you need good value chains, but you also need to have climate resilience to make all this work. Ms. Wade-Smith, what is the new trade dynamic for the developed world? I think of the American debate of Bill Easterly at NYU and Jeff Sachs at Columbia arguing about the deployment of our assets to jumpstart African growth. What's the new theory that works right now? Well, look, I'm not sure if it's a new theory, but I think really what I see is at the heart of all of this is people. So on the one hand, we're talking about jobs. Uh, and, and if we don't increase the flow of investment into Africa and through Africa, if we don't increase the trade flows to and from the African continent, uh, then we're not going to realise the, the great potential we have to create and sustain more jobs for the people who are coming into the workforce. And that's absolutely critical and it's become even more central to our to our effort uh, as a result of the pandemic and, and what we're seeing in terms of the economic damage there. But also we're talking about partnerships and one of the issues that came out so clearly for me at our conference earlier this week and indeed at the summit we had last year was this point about going together uh, and bringing together the innovation that we see in Africa with the innovation that we see in the UK and bringing people together to really make the most of different perspectives, different capital uh, and different, different solutions for the problems that we face.